Well, good morning, everybody. Um, we can get going. Just trying to give everybody a, a chance to get on if they if they're going to. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, this session today um, because one, it's I mean it's really just it's a discussion. Um, it's a, a panel of, of various worship leaders who um, we've we've benefited from this week uh, in our in our various classes. But now is the chance that we get to ask questions. Whatever questions we have of uh, of these of these fine folk here, um, really, like I'm just I'm proud of the staff that we have in our territory. Uh, people who uh, are you know are committed to their calling and have excelled in their craft and are now passing it on to uh, the next and current generation of worship leaders, which is you guys. Um, so we get to ask whatever questions we we want. Uh, hopefully we're all in a position in our home cores where uh, we are um, leading worship in some capacity, whether that's playing or singing or actually the worship leader. Uh, and if you're like me, uh, over the course of the year, uh, you, you'll have you know things that are more difficult than others. And... Um, you may have questions on, like, is there a better way to do this? Well, here's here's the chance you get to ask people who do this for a living. Um, how how do they how do they make this this stuff happen? So I'm really excited about that today. Let me just introduce everybody so uh, we all know <clears throat> who who we're talking to. We got Rachel Wiley, uh, the assistant music director of the Georgia Division. She comes to us with a, a bachelor's degree in worship leading worship something worship studies. Something worship from Liberty University. Uh, then we've got Jimmy Cox from the AOK division. Jimmy, are you an, an official ADMD or you have a different title? Yeah, I'm at I'm at ADMD. ADMD, assistant music director from from AOK. Uh, Jimmy plays drums and all things stringed instruments, and uh, he's a great uh, great spirit, great organizational mind. Uh, so we're we're going to benefit from that. Adley Charles, the newest. Uh, divisional music divisional music director in the Southern Territory from the Florida Division, uh, and he he's a phenom on on bass. I've seen him play drums. I've seen him play keys. He's a great guitar player. He does he does it all. He just left. Oh, there he is. And then Ronnie Murchison in Memphis. We heard from him a little bit earlier today, but uh, one of my favorite worship leaders in the world. Uh, he just he has uh, the sp spirit's anointing on on his ministry, and we're gonna we're ho hopefully tap, be able to tap into that some this morning. Is that everybody? Yeah. Okay. So, what are, what are some burning questions uh, that we can ask of these guys? What what are some questions you guys have? Don't be shy. We're very transparent. That's how we grow. Life for real. What what do you find the hardest part of your job? And so, uh, Sarah, you're cutting a, out a little bit there, but it sounds like you're asking, "What is the hardest part of your job?" Is is that right? And and what's your favorite what's part? Your favorite. Mm. What do you think is the hardest part? of your job and what's your favorite guys i think i mean favorite part is just getting to do what we get to do which is just literally my my job i do get paid for it as an admd but my my job my purpose my calling right now is literally to just worship the lord and to help others do so so that's kind of a, a cheesy answer if you will but that's my favorite part of it um it's never it's always a, a enjoyable time for me. Um, the hardest part, and I think it just, it's the same answer for any part of ministry is sometimes dealing with your people. Um, there are always gonna be things that come up. People may not agree on certain things. Um, there are always gonna be people who are very opinionated. Um, so probably working with people sometimes, there are a lot of enjoyable times with your people as well, but there are some days where you just need a minute. So that would probably be the hardest for me. Nice. Yeah, I, I love I love being able to do something that um, moves me uh, in a way that uh, brings me closer to Christ, um, where I feel I feel closer to Him. Um, but that is also difficult because it requires 
um, personality traits that don't come natural to me. Um, it requires me to be a people person. It requires me to um, be vulnerable, and that's difficult for me. Um, so, like, I, yes, I love I love doing something that moves me, but it requires something of me that is uncomfortable. So I think that's that's one of the hardest things for me. Come on, Ronnie. What's up with you? What's your favorite prop, Rev? Can you can you guys hear him? One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah. Keep coming, keep coming. There it is. I'm sorry, I didn't turn my volume down. I said my greatest, uh, the the greatest, the, the what I enjoy most is being able to, um, is before the services and after the service where we get to play together or just fellowship. Fellowship is always best for me. Anything, if you want to know anything about me, it's always about the fellowship um, because I learn more about people in that time um, and we get to interact. Uh, just by example, we were working, um, Rachel, we were working together a little while uh, back and um, uh, you might not know this about Rachel, but she 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 swears and no, I'm just joking, I'm joking. Um, but she got upset with me, um, and I've learned during that time, and it's great and it's anointed as God has blessed her to be. Um, I I was able to see her in her element in her humanity, which was so beautiful because we only get to see like you guys only get to see most times us operating under our anointing. But I think it's really good when you can see the humanity and the anointing and still be able to respect both. So, um, Rachel, um, it gave me a great, we, we had a great example, a great time, and she still loves me and I love her very much as well. Um, and, and, and she can remember, uh, uh if you're going to get it done, you know, but I'm so grateful. I'm grateful. So that fellowship is always, it's beautiful. I just don't think we get enough of it. That would be my thing that I, I, about my job that's the most frustrating is that i don't we don't personally i don't get enough time to fellowship with the people who kind of iron sharpens iron that you know help me to be stronger and better and because we, we're so busy always time pouring out and helping and you know and that's necessary but you know this just uh ties my hands when i don't get an opportunity to um just have people around me that are better than me all these people on, on the call right now just make me better so yeah yeah, I'll add to that, Rev. Uh, I miss, I love people and I love hard. Um, and sometimes that can be a problem. But um, fellowship is huge because, like you said, as leaders, especially in a divisional level, we're always out, out, out just doing stuff. Um, and that's one of the things I, I wish could be different. And it's hard for me to have a good balance between work and family. Um, I have two growing boys who need daddy, and it, it takes discipline to be able to do what I need to do as a vocation, as a ministry, and then still be daddy and a husband at home. So that that's a tough part for me, but yeah, I, I love what I do, uh, and I love the fact that God would want to use me to do what I do, because he could use anybody else. Um, that I mean, you guys are great musicians, and I feel blessed to be able to do what I do, honestly. Yeah, some good thoughts. Anybody else? I was just going to say, uh, for me, it's teaching. Uh, I, I, I love teaching. Um, so anytime I get to, to do that, um, I feel like I'm, I'm really in my element. Um, the hard stuff is, you know, any t all the stuff leading up to that, um, you know, trying to organize volunteers, get, uh, get everything together. All, all the prep is like um, the work. And then whenever I actually get to be with people and in front of people, that's almost like the reward. Um, uh, that's the part that everybody sees. But for me, um, and I think for all of us, uh, all the work, if you're doing that successfully, then I'm, you've done a whole lot of work leading up to that. Um, so, you know, putting in the time to, to make it happen so that you can get there and be successful and, and be effective in what you do. Yeah, that's great. I have a question. Uh, I'm gonna, this is a hard-hitting question right off the bat because we, we only have an hour, so I, I want to get to it. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, earlier this week about the, the roles of a worship leader and um, 
how like the, the different different responsibilities that we have in in that role. Um, and I, like I've been reading some books where it talks about like the worship like as a worship pastor, it's it's our it's our job to kind of teach and direct our our congregation into uh, what worship is, like what is uh, what is appropriate worship, how how to uh, cultivate this lifestyle of worship. In the Salvation Army, we have a little bit of a different structure uh, where we, we are very um, officer heavy in terms of leadership responsibility. What what is the role of a Salvationist worship leader in teaching the core people, the core congregation, about cultivating a lifestyle of worship? Do you think do we are we are we music directors or are we worship pastors? And I'm I'm not leading to a particular question. I'm just curious in where you guys are and what you've seen. Do you have that uh, that responsibility added to you? Does that make sense? Yes, um, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, the one constant in the Salvation Army is that officers are going to come and go. Um, so for, for those of us who are not officers, who maybe don't feel called to be officers, um, it's so important that we be um, consistent pillars of faith and examples of worship lifestyles in our core and for our people. Um, uh, they'll remember that, and you might be the person that mentor someone as they, you know, grow up um, or go through really important times in our li- their lives. So yeah, I think it's very important for us to, to pour into our people. Um, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna lead in worship, um, then, then I think that we have a, a vital role to play in that regard. Well, um, to jump right in, since you said we only got an hour, so let's get it. Um, I think and as far as answering that question, I believe that the way that the Salvation Army is set up is that you, we are not, we though we operate in the office in worship as worship pastors or leading people in worship, but the way we're set up, I don't really believe that we are, you're given that full um, right of a worship pastor. Um, a worship pastor works in sync with the leadership, with the pastor, um, knows what's happening, uh, knows the order of the service, knows what's happening weeks in advance. There's prayer meetings that the pastor and the worship pastor has together. You can stop me when you think that these are things that are happening in your core. Um, things, it's just, honestly, we're not set up for that because leadership because it changes, um, there are different directions that leadership goes in that you have to respond to. Now, granted, though we are individual worshipers, I believe that when we are leading, you know, that's what people get from us. It's, you know, we can't do anything about that. But the full office of a worship pastor, you know, like you said, it's your responsibility to teach people, um, you know, your full responsibility. And I'm sure anyone on the panel could could probably agree with me that our full responsibility is not simply to teach people how to worship the Lord, how to bring them closer to the Lord. We have so many other responsibilities, so many other things that we have to take care of that there are times that that responsibility goes lacking and even biblically they would find themselves um and the early apostles would assign different people to uh do certain responsibilities that was more uh minuscule not less important but this way they could stay focused on the word or stay focused on worship i think a worship pastor should just be what the responsibility is is to literally be focused in on worship what a worship pastor does um, and whatever that entails. And it would be different. It's not the same for every church, but it should, the one thing that should be the same for every church is to usher the people into the presence of the Lord. Um, And not just on Sunday, but that would happen throughout the week. When you went to the office of the worship pastor, there would be things around and conversations that would always, always, always be leading you toward um, the presence of the Lord. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but despite that, I, I believe as if the Lord has called you at your core to be there, just always remember that it's your core, right? Uh, our pastors come and go. It's transitional. And I think sometimes we get discouraged when we have an officer that comes in and we're like, oh, man, they're just going to mess up everything we worked on for the past five years. Uh, as hard as it is, still support them. Um, we're, supp- we're supposed to support our leadership, and sometimes we're not eye to eye, and it's unfortunate. 
but when they leave, you're still there. If you leave, then who's going to take over for you? Especially if we're not training people behind us to, you know, have positions to be able to lead. Um, but educate yourself. Please, please educate yourself. Don't wait for the Salvation Army to come and give you a handout. Hey, this is how you become a, a better worship leader. Read, ask questions, um, find mentors who are not in the army that can you can have conversations with about how they're living their you know, spiritual walk with the Lord. Because uh, I think a lot of times as Salvationists, we're always waiting for a handout from from our core officers of the Salvation Army. Or like, okay, I'm going to send you to the TMI. Find a worship conference you can go to on your own on your own dime. Um, and educate yourself and empower yourself. Um, and the Lord will bless you if you do that. I think that, let me just jump in real quick. I think that that statement is, 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 is really good. It's just that I think that in the question that Josh asked, I think we haven't been set up for that. I think that our people are used to um, on just, just regular worship leaders or at the regular core, we're used to being told what to do. We're used to being instructed how to go about getting things done versus being instructed just how to be a Christian. You know what I mean? More or less in your worship with the Lord and how to live and how to walk. And those things will inspire us to do everything that you're saying. Like I'm, you know, I'm not, it's not just contingent on me going, well, like we, I know, kid, you know, young folks sit around and just, I'm waiting to go to TMI, I'm waiting to go to this, I'm to, you know, they do that. But their own individual walks with Christ have been challenged more than the things that we kind of present, you know, in our own, in our own fellowship. I think that if we're presenting uh, their walk with Christ more, and that's what I'm saying, like with a worship pastor, it's more about your relationship with God versus your relationship with your church, because those things are encompass in your relationship with your church is in your walk with God, your relationship with your your doctrines and understanding. All those things are encompassed in your walk with God. But we need to, I think, you know, if we emphasize a lot more the walk with God, your relationship with the Lord, how to do these things and so on and so forth, these regular practices as far as understanding doctrine, Bible study, tithing, these are things that are part of our walks with God. And I think that we could reach out and be deeper um, as individuals so that when the, when the officers change or when the flow changes, you're ready to go. I think Jimmy said in one of his classes, um, I, I use the word liquid. I think he used Gumby, but, but liquid um, – to be able to just whatever form that takes, wherever God is taking us, we're able to move with that. And I believe this can go all the way up to leadership, you know, all the way to the top down to the bottom is being able to learn how to be liquid enough in our walks with Christ so that as we, you know, the Lord is moving to the left. Let's say we get a new officer that comes in, boom, new officer comes in and they want to shift to the left. We can shift and it, it'll seem seamless because our walk with God is, is where it needs to be versus is we kind of stationary in certain ideas and principles and it's got to be this way or we do it this way and it kind of that that's why i think that's when the 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 conflict it's not really a conflict but it probably is a conflict that's where the conflict comes from i believe because we end up like well you know it's you know we did it this way or we used to do it that way or we, you know we used to like, the core officer was here and this is how we did it. and we had a praise team and we met every wednesday and we rehearsed for an hour or we did it sunday morning and this is how we kind of get into a routine you know what if we need to do it on a thursday and not just because of practic practicality but just because you know that we do it on a thursday and somebody happens to walk through the lord wants us to do it that day and because somebody's going to walk through that needs to hear that message or need just just all types of things i guess you can go all over the place but holistically i believe that our walk with christ needs to be more emphasized and our relationship with god if we emphasize those things a lot more than the stationary things that we kind of find you know, regular in our, in our cores now, I, and just in our relationship in our church, I believe that those things would even open up a lot bigger as far as worship and where it's going. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Um, so just kind of in line with what Ronnie's saying about making sure that our walk with God is, is, the focal point, um, how do you guys as leaders who are constantly pouring out into the lives of others, how do you do that? Like, how do you uh, personally invest in your own growth and your own walk? What are some things that you guys do? Uh, 
Um, for me, I've always enjoyed reading. That's always been something that I like, and especially as I've gotten older and gotten into um, full-time ministry and things are always happening and always kind of just swirling at all times. So I like to uh, find times where I can sit alone and in quiet um, and either read just directly the word of God, or um, I know Josh mentioned like Worship Matters the other day. There are some really good books um, that are written by worship leaders for worship leaders um, that I use to just kind of refill and reset. Um, so reading is is my first way. And my second one is uh, I too, I just find, again, I, my week is jam packed. So I, I find a corner of it and I will just sit um, with, with songs that I know speak to me, with songs, again, that I know are, are sound. I'm not singing anything over myself that I wouldn't speak over myself. Um, but just sitting in that time, communing with the Lord, just in quiet, um, that really, really helps me. And I need that because going into a Sunday morning, my Sunday mornings are anything but quiet. So if I haven't done that setup before Sunday, I'm not going to get it you know, in the car on the way there or setting up that morning or what have you. So mine comes in quiet dur during the week sometime. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big uh, advocate of, of reading. I don't read as much as I would like to. I just I find myself uh, grinding all day and then I get home and uh, – I got to deal with, you know, my family. I got to be a good uh, husband and father to my kids. And then when it comes time to read, I just end up falling asleep. But uh, when I can, when I can make it work, um, I've read a couple of books that have, that have really been nice. I just add, uh, dropped a couple of links in the chat. Worship Matters is probably one of my favorites. That's it's always, a, you know, a good one to start with. There's a Zach Hicks book called The Worship Pastors, which is really good. Um, there's another one. I was just trying to see if I could find it. It's by the same guy. Do you have Doxology and uh, I just I just read it. What's that? What's Doxology what's it called? Theology. Yes. What is it? Doxology and theology. It's really good. I was, I was looking back on my shelf. And I haven't read that one. Oh, that's been yeah. That's on my list. I haven't read it yet though. I'm a big sucker for like design. Like if a book has a, like a neat looking cover, I'm gonna read it. And that one, that one looks good. I'm gonna drop that in the chat. Yeah. I mean, podcast too. Do you guys have like a favorite podcast? Or are you podcast people? Uh, the Hour of Holiness with Bill Urey uh, is life changing. If you if you haven't listened to it, it's not just about being a worship pastor, just being a, a Christian and uh, uh, living living a holy life. Um, uh, Dr. Bill Urey has been a incredible uh, theologian in the Christian church for a long time. He just recently joined the army, um, which is a pretty incredible thing for us. So Bill Urey, B-I-L-L-U-R-Y, um, go look him up. Uh, it's called the Hour of Holiness, but they're only about twenty minutes long, so don't freak out. Uh, you got time. Go listen to it, especially right now, in all of our life. You've got the time. This is a great book that I read through COVID. Uh, it's by John Mark Comer. The Ruthless Illumination of Hurry. Uh, it's awesome, and uh, this is a spiritual disciplines handbook. Um, if you want to grow in your spiritual discipline, uh, you definitely want to have that. It tells you how how to break it down and how to enact all these disciplines in your life. So these are two that I've, I'm always going to. Uh, and actually, I think I have the PDF. So I may, I may bless y'all with it. So bless I away, still have man. the PDF from last year. Boom, Adley. see that? Hey, there you go, Come on, Shelly. Come on, Chuck. Awesome. I guess like uh, part two to that question um, would also be like, um, obviously spiritually recharging, but like what, what up, like, what hobbies, what, what things feed you guys, um, in, in when you need to recharge or Sabbath or, you know, like what, what are those things look like for you guys? I have an accountability group, uh, that I check in with every week. Um, and we have this thing called a Ben, a Ben group. It's a discipleship group where you ask five questions. 
Um, and I, I have those guys keep me accountable. I'm like, you know, and I tell them what I'm struggling with and then they pray about it and then they check up on me via text. So that to me is huge. Um, cause again, when you're so busy, it's so hard to find time to sit down, but I've learned to breathe, right? When stuff, cause I don't have control of life. I don't. And sometimes I try to act like I do. And sometimes I just sit down and I breathe and I, I say, Lord, you, you got this. Uh, just remind me. And I journal. And I <laughs> put a bad disclaimer. I thought journaling was for girls only <laughs> when I was growing up. But I journal now and I write down, you know, what the Lord is doing in my life. Because when stuff happens to me or when doubt are trying to come back, I go back. I'm like, hey, Lord, you did it then. Um, and it's helping, it's helping me to trust. And I know it's bad to just, you know, not trust, but it happens. Sometimes I doubt the Lord is going to do what he says he's going to do. But when I go back in my journal and see how he's acted in my life, it's been um, evident. Then. So those two things help me, like a discipleship group, a mentoring group, and then journaling. Chris, are you uh, asking like a spiritually what we do to recharge or just kind of in general? Sorry, let me unmute. Uh, just anything really, because, you know, obviously, like, God wants us to enjoy life, to have fun, to, to you know, and I think part of our, our ministry is stronger when we're able to also invest in ourselves and recharge. I know for me, like, burnout is a real deal. Um, and so um, I try to be intentional to just kind of find ways to recharge. And, yeah, I mean, God has bless this earth with so many awesome things that that we can do to to recharge i'm just curious you know both spiritually and then just uh you know yeah life i I i have a weird one uh i like to get just away from music every now and then for a while and uh do do something else so growing up uh my dad was on the pit crew for a race car at a local racetrack uh uh, uh, sprint cars uh they're it, it, they race on dirt uh, and we still have some tracks around here so every now and then I like to go out on a Friday night maybe take my daughter go out to the racetrack watch the cars race smell the ethanol breathe it in and uh, do that and then go home and uh, and I'm good for the week that's just kind of my get away from everything uh, thing that I do it, it's the most redneck aspect of my life <laughs> Um, if we're talking about fun stuff, um, I'm not doing it right now because I can't really go vacation anywhere. I love kayaking um, and you can't contact me while I'm kayaking. So I love to just go out with no phone. I'm just out. Lake Junaluska is my favorite place to kayak at. There's a lot of great little areas that you can kind of go off to. Um, so I love kayaking. If it's, you know, COVID time and we're kind of stuck in one place, um, I have a dog who is my first son. He is the love of my life most days. Sometimes he's a brat. Um, but I love hiking with him. Again, you can't contact us. And because my, it sounds so dumb. I know I'm not a real mom, but I am very busy during my week and he gets the short end of the stick a lot. So it's a twofer. I'm in nature and things are more quiet and slowed down and then he gets time with mom. So I really enjoy those things. Also jigsaw puzzles, but it's like a nerdy thing, so I'll log off. I'm in an underground fight club. Yes. Uh, I'm just kidding. Josh, you're not supposed to talk about that. It's the first rule. <laughs> no, I, I just, I mean, I have to do, I have to, I have to take a break from stuff that is routine for me. Uh, so, as, you know, I, like I, I love playing guitar. I love leading worship. I love listening to that music, but um, sometimes listening to Christian music is, it just becomes work for me. So I have to take a step back, um, and just do something different. Uh, whether it's like cutting the grass, I mean, I have to cut the grass every week anyway, but doing something completely out of my routine, it's that like, that's life giving to me. It's just, it just breaks the routine. It lets me, um, reorient my, my mind and and I've, I'm not trying to over spiritualize it, but when I when I do that, I I become more aware of what's you know what's actually in front of me, which is kind of good. Have y'all seen the movie uh, Onward? It's on Disney Plus and stuff. Yeah, 
So Josh says he's got to take a break from Christian music. I imagine the mom in the van saying she's just going to put on her tunes and she rolls the window up and starts blasting death metal. Maybe that's just what I do. I don't know. But uh, no, I agree, Josh. Every now and then I got to, because you start, you, your mind goes into analytical mode so quickly that every now and then, um, especially in the contemporary worship side of things, um, you can kind of get stuck in one muddy kind of place musically. So it's good to sometimes uh, with with discernment see what else is uh you know going on out there with with other musicians let me ask you another question uh as as a philosophy of worship leading as, as you you as a worship leader for your people for your your flock do you try to separate the joys and difficulties of your personal life from your worship leading so that it it so that that stuff doesn't spill into your worship leading, or do you use that as fuel or energy or inspiration? Um, so, like, does your worship leading reflect whatever's happening in, in your personal life as well? Uh, sorry, Ronnie, you look like you were about to speak up. I'll let you go. I, I'll be I'll be real quick. I think um, in Christian ministry, there is sometimes a confusion between um, authenticity and transparency. Um, uh, transparency transparency was a big word for a while um, but I think honestly as a leader you know whenever whenever you've got people underneath you they don't need to bear the weight of your burdens as well that doesn't mean that you have to put on a front necessarily or be a different person um, but I don't want to burden my people who have their own burdens with what I have I have mentors in my life who I can go to to talk to about these things um, I can be authentic to who I am in my experience and my my uh, my walk with Christ and, and where I am um, without having to you know put whatever personal burdens I'm dealing with on someone else and and add to what they're having to deal with. So I, if we're going to have a word like that, then I think authenticity is uh, trumps transparency and ministry with with our people. Um, I, so last year at TMI, uh, there was, there were a lot of things happening in my life, uh, that were not, none of which were very positive things. Um, but I'm, I'm still a worship leader. And, and as Jimmy is saying, you know, you still have those things in your life. You still have those burdens that are happening. Um, but you don't want to a take those and lay them on the people that you're leading, but two. There is some time, there are times when you don't feel like leading at all. And you feel like I can't go up with the stuff that's in my head right now, with the stuff that I'm dealing with right now, how in the world can I lead people and lead my people and it be beneficial? Um, so last year was the first time uh, the, the countdown's going, it's like four minutes and 30 seconds. I've got to grab my pack and my mic and I'm, I'm sitting here fussing for lack of a better word with the Lord and saying, I can't, I can't do this. I can't go up there. I, I don't want to. And he very clearly spoke to me and just said, Rachel worship through, it. let them see you worship through it. And so I, I think without laying your burdens on your people and without um, making everyone uncomfortable by going up there and saying, Hey guys, I had the worst week, you know, running down the list of what it is. I think instead channeling, because when we lead our, our congregation, they're real people and they come with things that morning as well. And they are dealing with things as well. And they may not want to worship. They may not feel like entering into that space. So if you as your work, as their worship leader can show them and live that out and show them I'm in pain. And that morning I was in pain, but I worshiped through it. And, and the Lord hopefully used me and spoke through me. And I felt just this overwhelming peace about it all. And this refreshing from the Holy Spirit because he, he said to me, let them see you worship through it. So I think in those moments where you don't feel like being up there maybe, and it's hard for you to do, I would encourage you to do it anyway, because your people, going back to authenticity, your people need to see you worshiping, even in the times where it's not easy, even in the times when you don't feel like it that morning. I think it's important for them to see us as their leaders, um, living that out in our own lives. Ronnie, don't you have a song called In, In Spite of Praise that kind of talks to that? Yes, he does. Can, can, you, can you elaborate on that? Um, that song was birthed out of 
of of a lot you know um i'm 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 probably on the uh, uh the opposite side of the spectrum or the pole if you will because um i believe not going into detail but i do believe that it's who i am my hurt is who i am my my pain is who i am um i talked earlier about anointing and humanity i think that we shelter people too much because when they're going through their struggle and so on and so forth, they don't know how to go through because they don't have an example. Um, that's what I believe. Um, so I believe in spite of, for instance, you all know that I just lost my sister two weeks ago, my only sister. Um, and she's my older sister. She was 49. Um, and she had a heart attack, which was unexpected. Um, it's very difficult to walk through and talk about, but I think that this opportunity presents itself for me to say, you know, I, I could have just got out of everything and just like, no, I'm hurt. I'm done. You know what I mean? You know, but the truth of the matter is, is that in spite of what I'm going through, God still has to be glorified. Um, and people as Christians, we need to recognize that we're in a fight you know, I don't think we realize that we are in a fight. We are not in a, you know, um, happy life style. This is not what we're here for. Um, though we, those are fringe benefits. It's cool that we get, you know, you know, I got eight kids and I get to spend time with them. And we get to run up and down and slide downstairs. And I mean, it's some crazy stuff. But the truth of the matter is that my children know that their lives has to be pleasing to God. And I know it sounds spiritual and deep and so on and so forth. But to be really honest with you guys, I'm, I'm totally different, I guess. Everything I do, I try to make sure that it's in Christ. Um, even birthdays, everything. And I'm not saying super spiritual. Hear me when I tell you, I'm, I'm very slackity. I can be, you know, on the side doing craziness too, you know. But um, but honestly, my wife will tell you, my children all the way down to my six-year-old, they will tell you, you know, that this is who he is. Um, and like I said, my sister passing, she had five girls. Um I had to go out there. She passed on a Wednesday. I flew out to her home in Las Vegas on a Thursday. Um, her husband was just in shock. Um, uh, and I mean, dealing with that. And this was, this was my sister. You know what I mean? So I'm doing my best not to cry. So y'all just help me out. Okay. But, um, but this is my sister who I haven't had any time to grieve. I'll even go into a little detail a little more for everybody on the phone, on, on the, the call. My mom, I was on the phone with my mother and my sister's husband, my brother-in-law, when they were at the hospital with her. Um, so when, as my mom can hear my mother saying, what's going on, tell me what's happening, what's happening. And I could hear her scream when she heard my brother-in-law say that she's gone. I heard him say it, and now I hear my mother, who's on the phone with me, she starts screaming, she calls my name, and she's saying, Ronnie, she's gone, oh my, and she's, and I'm, I'm hearing my mother holler and scream, you know, so all of these emotions and things are going through me immediately, because this is who I am, um, I just said, okay, mom, just, just relax for a minute, mind you, this is my sister, you know, we're relaxed, we're going to see what we need to do, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to get a flight the next day, we're going to go out and take her daughters, you know, help out, see what we need to do, and I stayed out there for a little while just to um try to help manage things i think i called the brothers when i was out there and they saw me i think i was crying when i was on the phone you know but the truth of the matter is i'm, I'm not ashamed of it because you know it's kind of a part of who i am so as far as it's it showing and, and i'm not saying i'm not going into detail about every little thing that happened but i do believe that people need to recognize we all need to see it we need to know that you know, and we're going to go through some stuff. We're going to get hit, but are are we still able to love God through that? Are we still able to worship the Lord through that? Can I really be a worship pastor with my sister? You know, the death of my sister. Can I still worship God? Can I still lead people into worship? I think one of the things I was missing, I think I said, you know, I got to get a piano or something. I just want to lead my, my, my family. I just want to get them together and just sing with them and just pray over them. And we did those things anyway, but without a piano, you know, it wasn't the best, you know. But still, you know, I'm grateful that I was able to, not on my own because, you know, I was broken and I'm still broken. Trust me when I tell you, I, I do a lot to get myself to where I'm at now. And then when I get off the you know phone with you guys, I'll probably go cry and, and, and I'm having moments like that. But um, to do what needs to be done for God, it's non-negotiable. 
It has to be. So all of my recreation, everything else, like I cut the grass. That's that's my time. I love cutting the grass. I love doing a little gardening. And, you know, my grass is sharp, Jack. You know what I'm saying? I, I do my thing, you know. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for small little moments that I, I do share and do have. But mostly everything that I do, whether I'm worshiping on the stage, whether I'm here at the house, whether I'm at the office, whether I'm wherever I'm at, you know, when I get an opportunity to do that, I believe that I have to do everything within my power. And that includes me giving who I am because that's, it's just who I am. I think that's how God has made me to just be that way. Um, Cause I think it's any, any other, anything, and I'll stop talking anything else. I think is false because if I'm one way, on, you know, if I'm, if I'm this person, when I'm with, you know, like we're behind the scenes and we're hanging out and we're partying, what you see with me is what you get. You know what I'm saying? I'm the same guy behind the scenes. I'm in front of the scenes, you know, whether I'm hurt, whether I'm not hurt, I'm, you know, I'll, t- I'll let you know, hey, listen, hey, this is what's going on with me. You know, like I said, my sister passed, so I might cry. Something you might say might be something that might you know, you know, help me remember something or, or jar something, but that's not going to change the fact that I have to be faithful to who God is. Not everybody's mature or spiritually mature to be at that place, but I believe that that's something that we need to do, you know, as far as worship leader or as a worship pastor. So in spite of Chris, that's where it, that not, you know, from there's other things that have happened in my life um, that in spite of, I've learned to say, God, I got to give it bless you in spite of even when I've been right and been accused of being wrong, I have to learn to bless God in spite of those things. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I, I love that sentiment, Ronnie. <clears throat> and I, again, we, we appreciate for you, you, uh, being here with us this week. Um, I know that's, that's a difficult time. And I think there's, um, I mean, for me, there's a difference in my my personal worship times and the times when I'm leading uh, congregationally or corporately. And in my personal worship times, those are the times when I I can kind of let my guard down a little bit. I can ask you know the difficult questions like uh, like God, I'm struggling right now with with doubt, or God, you know, I, like Your Word says that You're faithful. I'm not seeing it in this moment. Help me, help me to see this, and I like I can worship through that, just as as Rachel says. And then when we get together, when I get together with my core uh, corporately. Um, I then become I'm I'm an individual that comes into a scene where everybody is coming in with their own uh, their own realities, uh, and together we are putting. Uh, our worships together to lift them. So I add my own worship to the worship of everyone else in, in the room, and it becomes something different. So as a worship leader, when I step on on the stage, uh, like you know, those 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 difficulties that I, you know, the times when like I I struggle a little bit, that, that is who I am. Uh, but I also recognize that um, you know when when I'm leading worship, I'm there. To worship through that, to I'm there to you know to attribute praise and honor to him regardless. Um, I don't necessarily need to get into that you know on on the stage because and, and, and hopefully you're you're as um, authentic as as Jimmy said with your your worship team as as much as possible and they they know they know what's going on with you and they can they can help you through that and that's that's the accountability that we've talked about as well. Uh, but when you get together corporately. We all bring our own, uh, our own uh, present realities together, and we worship together through them, which is which is kind of a cool thing. So it becomes something better and something bigger than what we are on our own. Yeah. That makes sense. For me, worship is not something I put on, right? Uh, the, the stage, you know, it's a lot of time we talk about stage. You know, I'm, I'm getting on stage. Life is the stage, and God is watching. He's like, are you going to worship me or are you going to pretend or are you going to, you know, and oh, it's, it's okay to, like Ronnie said, it, it's okay to let people know how you feel. Like as I, as I was growing as a, as a believer, even I have some, some kids that the Lord has blessed me to mentor. And I'm like, sometimes you got to let them go. Right. Cause how would they know that God loves them unless they go through whatever they're going through? Um, I'm not Jesus to them. I'm trying to help them to depend on Jesus, but sometimes you got to let them go through it so they can understand who God is. Um, 
I have to share my story about being being sick so they can know that God is a healer. Uh, and Ronnie sharing a story about, you know, grieving, um, help us to understand, hey, God com- comforts even in the time of need like that he is in right now. Doesn't mean it's all good for him. But again, like the Lord still needs us to be his hands and feet to be the light in this dark world because this is a spiritual warfare, y'all. This ain't no joke. And and the higher you go with the Lord, the more the enemy is going to come after you. So you better be ready. Um, so don't 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 let the fact that, you know, in, in the Salvation Army, when we get on stage, people applaud us and all that stuff. But then in the back, we're just living all type of life. Nah, don't do that. Um, Jesus Christ is who you're worshiping through everything you do. Um, and people will talk. It's just a matter of life. You know, people will talk and put you down, but the, the Lord loves you. He's always going to be there for you. And that's why you got to depend on him and, and let him see you through your trials and share that with people in your worship. Um, and Kind of equate your story to what happens in the Bible so they could see how God is faithful. And God is faithful. I've seen so many, I mean, through COVID, God has been faithful. I've lost a friend, a good friend of mine, but God is still faithful. That doesn't change who he is. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, it, it's, there's no doubt that God can use the, the difficulties and the pains of our experience, um, you know, to show his, his faithfulness through us to our other people. Um, uh, I, I think that, um, I, I hope what I was saying earlier what it, what it didn't, didn't come out the wrong way. Um, I, I think that Maybe what we don't want to put on our people is if I walk in on a Sunday morning and uh, I'm kind of dejected because uh, my kids have been acting like fools all morning and uh, uh, me and my wife had an argument getting out the door and those things. I don't want to pour that onto people, um, but I also don't want to, uh, like you guys said, these, you know, Adley talking about dealing with his health issues and Ronnie who's going through these, uh, these personal times, those are certainly... God, God can move through those things in a beautiful way, even when we don't know it or see it. Um, so we certainly don't want to clamp all that down. Um, uh, that's not, that would be inauthentic to do that um, uh, because th- those are times where God can really uh, show us his, uh, his love and his mercy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, anybody else got a question? I actually have a question. Go ahead, so, Shelby Piano. Hey, yeah, that's not my last name, but I don't no, know. I think it might, <laughs> it might be. Now. Um, ever since my the leadership switched in my core, I used to have the flowers, but now I have the Arokis and the Stillwater core. Ever since that trans- transition, I've been the main worship leader, and I'm the one leading the songs. I'm the one picking the songs. I'm the one printing and hole punching, you know, and everything. But just recently, I made the decision that I want to go to Oral Roberts University for worship arts. And that's going to happen maybe in the next year or two. But I just wanted to ask, how do you, how do you prepare your team for you to leave and for another worship leader or for somebody else to step up and to take on that role? Because I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so. Come on, Rev. We're waiting. Let's go. Come on, Ronnie. Let's go. Um, practically, I, I would identify uh, the person who was the strongest uh, musically, like practically. Um, and you might be able to find somebody who can do all of it. Um, but, you know, it doesn't always have to be the piano player or the guitar player to lead sometimes a drummer may be more prolific or know more about music or, you know, just practically. So music that way I would, I would identify who has the, the strongest ability musically. Um, then I would also try to identify who was the person who was, um, spiritually moving in the right direction. Um, and that could be the same person or it could be, you know, or same person could be two different people, you know, and then that doesn't mean that the person who is picking the music and running the rehearsals necessarily is the spiritual leader of the group. Someone may need to be the, you know, a chaplain or something else. I think, you know, it, it just, you know, if you're doing everything, 
you need to probably should get somebody else to help you out anyway. But if you're doing everything, you know, you should you should be like especially now and identify who's who one or two of those people are and start getting them to help with the you know, putting the binders together and, you know, starting to teach them what's necessary, what the things that you do and even the have them with you when you go through your pre rehearsal routines, everything else. You know, that way you can start mentoring them into the things that need to happen. And because you are younger, um, sometimes you may have some people older in the band that are just or in the force Japan or something it makes no difference older or younger you have to access your authority young lady and 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 make sure that everyone knows you know because you're doing the leading you're doing all the work you're putting all the work in so it's important that what god has used you to start building or building or build it it doesn't falter and i think that we have to do that in replacing ourselves we have to make sure that the ministry that god has given you responsibility over does not falter so you want to make sure that you put people in place to walk with you now currently you know um if you're singing next year or two or even six months whatever it is you want to make sure that they're walking with you and that they're able to see what you do and not just what you do but how you need them to do it because you're the leader so you want to make sure that, and that sounds, I know this sounds funny, but God has given you that responsibility and you want to make sure that it's done the right way. And then after a while, you kind of step back a little bit while you're still there, you know, and allow them to lead. And, you know, this way you can see how they do because they might do good in putting the binders together. But when it comes to leading the band, they might not do so well. So you need to see these things. You need to see it an example of what's going on so that this way you can make a really good decision. And then when it comes down to it, you want to go to your leadership and say, listen, um, I think that so-and-so and so-and-so are in position to do this, that, and the other thing. Um, can we pray about that? Because this is what my heart is saying, you know, and by all means, man, you're ready to go. I mean, even asking the question, you already ready to go. So it's a good thing. Yeah, I think you, you could start preparing your core as well. Um, so once, like if you, if you have the ability to identify if there, if there is someone else who maybe could be, you know, in the wings, um, I'd have them start leading now. Like you're, like, do all you can to support them. Um, you know, start start this transition now, so it's less jarring on on your on them and your and your congregation uh, when you actually when you actually go. If you don't have somebody there, um, that becomes a little more difficult. Uh, so maybe, um, like, I know Sebastian plays a little bit, so you use him to kind of help help transition as well. Um, but maybe start thinking about like what will worship look like when you leave and start slowly transitioning into that so it's it's less intrusive as you get closer yeah it's always good as a worship leader that you start to delegate stuff even if you're not leaving right because um, there's there's errors that some members of your team are better than you let them do it um, and actually you can learn from them uh, so that when an opportunity, an opportunity like that happens for you, um, you don't feel that it's going to fall apart. And trust, it's not going to fall apart. And the fact that the Spirit is put in your heart to find out, hey, I'm about to leave. I need to look for somebody that's going to help me, you know, keep this going. The Lord's going to honor that. So, um, kudos to you for doing that. And all the best with all Roberts. I know you're going to rock it, so go for it. Anybody else have a question or a comment? I have a comment for Josh and Chris. Uh, I know a lot of times you guys don't get the love that you deserve, right? And Rachel, too, because that's transmission. And I, 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 I just want you guys to know that we love what you do. Uh, we support what you do. And we are thankful for what you're doing at THQ to resource the territory. Because um, I know you guys you have your own family and... You don't get the love you're supposed to get because you're always busy, I busy, busy, love. busy, Sorry. you know. But uh, from us, I think I can I can speak for all of us that we appreciate everything that you do at THQ. And know that we support you. Uh, and if you need us and we're available, we're going to continue to support you to help expand God's kingdom. And that's all I'm going to say because it's 12 and I'm hungry. <laughs> I, Thanks, Adley. We're grateful for you guys. And um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be uh, able to work alongside you guys and, and like Josh said at the very top of this like just this is an awesome crew uh, so yeah yes um, 
Man, we we could we could seriously talk all day about this stuff. I I love seeing how different worship leaders operate and think, and I I get so much out of that. It's a, it's an inspiration to me, and I hope that um, it is for you guys as well. Because uh, at the end of the day, like we're all like our our focus is is at is at our home level, our home core level. That should be that should be your focus. And I I firmly believe that if we if we increase the quality of of our worship at the core level it'll you know it'll affect everything uh territorially in the salvation army out outside of music like if we take music out of the equation if our worship our lifestyles of worship uh become all invi- all, all encompassing of everything that is us if that happens at, like throughout your core uh the spirit will run through that that place and just uh, invigorate everything about about the ministry of the Salvation Army, and everything benefits from that. So, it's for me like it's it's all about worship. It's yes, the musical worship, but lifestyles of worship that we that we cultivate personally and in our core. That it makes everything better and richer and deeper. Uh, so that's 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 the goal that we're, we're hoping that we can convey. Um. Yeah, uh, we'd be glad to answer any any of the questions you've got. Uh, we're running out of time uh, for this this call, but uh, everybody here has a divisional music director who would be willing to answer a question. I would be willing to answer any question you have. I'm on um, Outlook, which is just joshua.powell at uss.salvationarmy.org. Uh, you can write to any of us here. We all have the same email address, just what the, our, our names uh, at uss.salvationarmy.org like every other Salvation Army person in the territory. Um, hit us up with any questions you've got. Um, just a, a shameless plug. Uh, we are going to be releasing a, a new transmission song uh, on Monday, I think. So if you're looking for something awesome. new to try to work out, um, maybe, maybe this will work. If not, then uh, hopefully we'll get you next time. Turn it uh, up. Yeah. Uh, anybody have anything else before we uh, wrap it up? All right. Uh, actually, Adley, would you mind closing us in prayer this morning? Sure thing. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful and thankful for who you are. Um, we honor you um, this morning um, for how you've been speaking into each of our hearts um, and how you want to manifest yourself through us not just through our gifts and our talents, but through our lives. You want us to represent you, to be lights for you in this dark world. And Father God, I just pray for each individual here, um, especially for my brother Ronnie, as he uh, con- continues to seek comfort from you and his family. Father God, right now, I just pray your blessing uh, over him and your continued anointing as he uh, makes himself available to serve you even as he goes through. Father God, we know uh, we don't always have the best uh, tools to do what we want to do and sometimes we want to dream big but uh, obstacles come in the way but Lord even when those things happen help us to continue to trust in you to be the provider that you've always been um, you give us life you give us breath and every morning you give us uh, grace and Father God help us to live a life that is also gracious unto others that we encounter um, thank you for Josh and his team and uh, Rachel and and Chris Hoffer and just bless them, bless their families and continue to expand their territory and for each individual at their core and right now, Lord, I just pray that you will help them to be encouraged um, and may this week, Lord, be just a, a, the boost that they need, the Lord, to continue to serve you and to be the very best they can be for you because, the Lord, souls are hurting every Sunday that come uh, even through the internet services that we have and I just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be a conduit that will help the holy spirit to manifest through us to help uh, take care of the souls of your of your people we love you and bless us now as we go and have some food to eat in jesus name amen amen thank you guys have a good lunch see you one o'clock for uh breakouts it's time for fellowship man let's go ronnie
go. One day somebody's gonna figure this out, and it's gonna be uh, a game changer. It's gonna be you, Josh. I'm I'm trusting you to be the game changer. See y'all. Right. See y'all. See you guys. Yeah.